Welcome to our overview of Java's supported programming paradigms. Modern Java, by which I mean Java from 2014 onwards, supports two primary programming paradigms. One is the imperative model, which includes object-oriented programming, and the other is the declarative model, which supports so-called functional programming. So you can think of Java as essentially a hybrid language that supports both these programming paradigms. Java has supported object-oriented programming from the very beginning, back in the mid-90s. It has support for abstraction through classes and the ability to hide information. It has support for inheritance using the extends keyword and the ability to derive methods and data from other existing classes. And it also supports polymorphism, also known as dynamic binding through its use of virtual method dispatch. I'm assuming that you know quite a bit about these concepts, so we won't spend a lot of time talking about them in these lessons. Instead, what we're gonna focus on is Java support for functional programming, which as I mentioned before, came in roughly the 2014 timeframe with Java 8 and the versions of Java that have come since that point. We'll be showing various modern Java code fragments as we walk through this and other lessons in this course. So let's first start off with a quick overview of the imperative programming paradigm. Object-oriented programming can be thought of as an imperative paradigm. What this means is that a program consists of commands that tell the computer what to do or what operations to perform. Imperative programming focuses largely on describing how a program operates via statements that change its state or its values or its fields. Here's a simple example that will illustrate some of the key themes behind imperative programming with object-oriented features in Java. Here we have a method called zap, which is designed to imperatively remove a given string from a list of strings passed as a parameter. You can see we passed the list of strings as the first parameter, followed by the string to omit as the second parameter. We first create a local variable that's called res, which is going to be an empty list, initialized as an array list, but accessed as a list and that will be used to hold the results. We then iterate sequentially through each of the lines in the parameter. And here you can see we're using a Java for each loop. If it happens that the line that's in the list at that point matches the line we're trying to omit, then we're going to ignore it. If there is no match, however, we're gonna go ahead and add the non-matching line to the res local variable. So that way we will include it in the results. After we're all done going through the loop, will return the list as the result of the zap method. So this is kind of classic Java imperative programming. You've probably all seen or written code very much like this. One thing to note, interestingly enough, is that this code applies the accumulator anti-pattern. You can read more about the accumulator anti-pattern in the link at the bottom of the slide. But in essence, it means this code is pretty much inherently sequential and trying to make it run concurrently to take advantage of multi-core processors will be very complicated and require a lot of surgery to the code. Let's take a look at declarative programming as an alternative model. Functional programming is a so-called declarative paradigm. And what that means is that a program expresses its computational logic without having to describe the control flow or the explicit algorithmic steps. Another way to look at this is that declarative programming focuses on what computations to perform rather than how they should be computed which of course is left as an implementation detail for lower level libraries or compilers to ferret out. Here's an example of a declarative implementation of the zap method, this time using functional programming features. The signature is the same, except this time we're going to be implementing it to declaratively remove a given string from a list of strings. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the list of strings and we're gonna call a factory method that's part of the Java streams framework, which we'll talk quite a bit about later. And this will be used to convert the list into a stream, which is basically a flow of its values. We'll then use what's called an intermediate operation called filter. And we're going to remove any line from the stream that matches the omit parameter. Keep in mind, omit is what we're trying not to include in the results. So what will come out of filter will be a stream of strings that don't match the omit parameter. And the final thing we'll do here is we'll have something called a terminal operation which will collect all the non-matching lines into a list and return it back to the caller. A couple things to note. First note the use of so-called fluent programming or fluent interfaces, where we chain method calls together. So we say lines.stream, which converts the lines list into a stream of strings. 
We then use filter, we connect it with filter, which gets rid of things that match omit. And finally, we use collect, collect it into a list. So this is what's often known as the fluent style or the fluent interface style. Notice also how easy it is to convert from a sequential model, which is this model here, to a parallel model by simply changing the factor method used to create the stream. So instead of having dot stream, we simply say dot parallel stream. And then that will go ahead and do all the filtering in parallel in a pool of threads. Notice how we were able to make that change with absolutely minuscule effect to the code. In contrast, have we made changes to our original imperative code that was using the sequential accumulator anti-pattern, it would have been a lot more work. Another thing to note here is that one thing that makes this easy is because the code we wrote was declarative and it's also stateless, which means it doesn't have any side effects. We'll talk more about that later as well. So let's go ahead and summarize the programming paradigms in modern Java. There was a nice tweet by a guy named Michael Feathers a while back, and he had a good quote that said, object-oriented programming makes, makes code understandable by encapsulating moving parts. Functional programming makes, makes code understandable by minimizing moving parts. And I think that's a very insightful way to look at things. So to summarize the two paradigms, Java's object-oriented programming features make code understandable by encapsulating the moving parts, by abstracting away from them, so that you don't have to know what the implementation details are in order to be able to use a method like zap, for example. And in contrast, it's functional programming features such as streams and parallel streams and other functional capabilities we'll talk more about here shortly, make code understandable by largely eliminating the moving parts. In other words, we're focusing almost exclusively on what computations we want to do and not worrying about how they're done, how is left as an implementation detail to some other framework or some other part of the overall compilation or translation process. So that wraps up our overview of Java's supported programming paradigms. Needless to say, we're gonna spend most of our time focusing on its support for the declarative functional programming model. 